Hey, Duke fans. Uh, we're back here with an episode of the Brotherhood Podcast today. We have a real special guest, uh, E. Dildy. First few days on campus here. I'll give you uh, a quick introduction, even though we've spent uh, some time together uh, at Northwestern together, but been in a number of college universities here. I have down Mizzou, Valparaiso, Northwestern, uh, Loyola Chicago, Eastern Illinois, most recently Oklahoma. Um, you're known as being one of the best recruiters in the country uh, throughout the college basketball realm. Um, and uh, obviously I just mentioned me and you spent three years together at Northwestern. So this will be a fun episode where uh, our fans will get some insight to hear about you and your past, your decision to come here, uh, what you're excited about, the opportunity. Um, but just happy to have you here. Are we able to find this find this room okay? It's only your, your second <laughs> got, or third day here. I've, I've been lost a couple times over the last two days, but I navigated my way here pretty good today. So, yeah. Nice. Awesome. Well, just to start, can you give uh, everybody a little bit of background? I'm sure everybody, when they saw that graphic, looked up your, your Wikipedia page or, or whatever to see kind of where you've been. But can you just go over a quick, uh, you know, pitch about your, your story and your career yeah. to date? So, you know, I was born and raised uh, in Chicago on the south side and grew up playing basketball. Come from a pretty big basketball family uh, in the Chicago land area. Um, <clears throat> went to Mount Carmel High School, went to King High School, uh, lastly, which was a very, you know, notable, prominent high school. Uh, attended Eastern Illinois University, uh, graduated from there, played overseas for, for a little bit and decided to come back and get into coaching. I've always had a passion for it. Um, both of my parents are educators. My dad was a was a longtime coach. Uh, my uncles uh, were longtime coaches. Uh, one of them coached a lot of years in Division One, so had a passion for it. Grew up in it. My mom is a longtime educator, and you know I just looked at coaching as a as as another form of education, and so uh, got in it at a young age. Was an assistant coach at a junior college with my dad, and then eventually became the head coach uh, there for a couple years and. Uh, was fortunate to get opportunity back at my alma mater at Eastern Illinois and started there and kind of worked my way up from there. And was at Loyola, was fortunate to be at Loyola during a time where uh, Coach Moser was building a program there that was really at the bottom at that time. And we, we, we tried to build a culture and establish, establish a culture there and was fortunate enough to go to a Final Four with some of those young guys we recruited uh, early on. And from there, uh, you know, forged my path, went to Missouri and you know, ended up at Northwestern uh, with Coach Collins and got the chance to coach you was that was awesome. And watching you grow uh, from the time you walked in until, you know, until you became a junior there. And so but learned a lot from Coach Collins uh, again, uh, <clears throat> had to at that point, And I know you remember this, Ryan, trying to establish a different culture because they were coming off an NCAA tournament a couple years before, but had kind of restarted there. And so mm -hmm. had to establish a culture again, based with a lot of young, young guys and um, so that was awesome going through that process. It's not always awesome when you kind of going through some of those dark days in there <laughs> when you're losing, but just watching those uh, uh, student athletes grow and, and watching and learning from Coach Collins on, you know, how to build it again. And it was awesome to look back and see this past year, a lot of those same young guys that came in with us, uh, Ryan, you know, make their second NCAA tournament ever in school yeah. history. So, um Rejoined Coach Moser back at Oklahoma once he took the job after his Sweet 16 appearance at Loyola, and uh, was kind of again starting the same process there as I had been through a lot in my career, just just building. And so um, it's been it's been a, a amazing journey. I've been blessed. Um, um, you know, when I look back on my on my path, uh, I've been fortunate and blessed, and I'm just you know grateful to to be sitting here with you in this room today. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's go back to Chicago. Obviously, you're from there. Uh, Coach Shire's from there, but you also met us there this past weekend. That was your first uh, time meeting a ton of our, our guys and just, I guess, an introduction to the program. Any first impressions you had over the weekend meeting some of our, our guys? Uh, what's the, you know, what's your, what have been going through your head? You know, a couple things. Uh, <clears throat> one, I was nervous. Obviously, Coach, uh, you know, Coach wanted me to get to Chicago, so I was nervous. It's always a little you know, butterflies in your stomach, you know, whenever you're the new guy. I, I joked about that a couple times over the weekend. Being a new guy is a little bit different. I hadn't been a new guy in a while. But, you know, for me it was surreal. Uh, joining a, a, a historic, um, great program, special program like Duke, but also the first time joining that program in the city I love and the city I care so much about with family there in Chicago, um, it couldn't have been a better 
better uh, situation for me. I was telling my wife throughout the weekend, and it just felt like a dream. So that's the first thing. Uh, the second thing, you know, with, with the guys, a lot of the guys that I didn't know, uh, as we went through a lot of those informative uh, meetings, uh, just the level of uh, the level of uh, engagement uh, from the players, uh, from such young players, in some of those meetings that a lot of you know, places I've been where maybe guys would have thought it was a little boring and some of the questions uh, they were asking um, the, the the speakers, I was uh, I was really, really uh, taken aback by how well averse they were, how how engaged they were. So, you know, that was that was uh, something that really stood out to me uh, along the trip. Yeah, no, that was something that uh, I know Rachel was talking about beforehand because we had a long day that Saturday. I think you met us maybe halfway through, but we had a long day of meeting right. with people, and there was some there was some uh, some talk about whether or not we thought our guys could stay locked in the whole time, but they did, and they we. Did. Uh, um, obviously, we met. It's easy to stay locked in when you're meeting with some of you know how successful some of those people were that uh, we did meet in Chicago. Um, obviously, a connection with Chicago, Coach Shire. Can you talk about how far back your relationship goes? Um, you guys would have been not around, not in the city at the same time right. playing, correct? <clears throat> no, not not. We didn't play together. I was uh, I was older than Coach, but my my little brothers came out the same time as uh, as Coach did. So we played for the same AAU program. Uh, so obviously I, I followed his career from the time he was in high school. We have so many different people in common because we played for the same program and, you know, just followed him closely, really got to know him during my time at Northwestern. Uh, obviously with Coach Collins, we had so many people in common through that Northwestern uh, tie and we, we just started to talk and develop a relationship, got to know him even more. Uh, my first year at Oklahoma, uh, we, we were able to get Jordan Goldwire uh, through oh, yeah. the transfer portal. And Jordan was a grad transfer, so I dealt with Coach a lot <clears throat> during that process as he was, you know, helping me a little bit and talking to Jordan. And me and me and Coach were talking very often. And then through that year, as Jordan played for us, you know, when different things came up, me and Coach would speak. So we just really started to develop a relationship over those years. And so even before he became uh, the head coach here, I was actually, it was funny, I was looking for a, a number or a name yesterday Last night, and I was looking back in my text and just seeing those texts back with Coach, um, back with, around the time Jordan was grad transfer, and I read them and, and thought they was pretty funny because it was well before I think he, he thought or even I thought that he would be the head, the next head coach. So, um, so we we just really you know established that relationship. And again, uh, coming from Chicago, we we have a we we have a bond with a lot of the things that we've been through. A lot of the teams, a lot of the things we've pl places we've played. So um, it's been it's been great to get to know them uh, even more. Yeah, it seems like, and it seems very apparent from this past weekend how much um, just Chicago guys in general, but you two take so much pride in being uh, from the city and coming out of that Chicago basketball area. Um, it, it can be an I, I know it's probably annoying to a lot of people that's not from Chicago. I say it all the time, but the pride we take in our city and in our basketball tradition, I know people probably like, oh, these Chicago guys, here they go again. But no, we, we do. We, we take a lot of pride in that. Yeah. So. Do you have a Chicago? We used to do this all the time in Northwestern here, too, because a lot of guys on this team that think seem to think that North Carolina is the basketball state. Uh, do you have a Chicago starting five all time? You know what? When I think about it, um, obviously, I, I haven't thought about this much. But if I did, you know, for me, Isaiah Thomas yep. would definitely have to be in there, and <clears throat> Mark Aguirre. Um, you know, I, I I would probably go Tim Hardaway in mm -hmm. there, and I I, I feel horrible because I know I'm leaving off some really good players on the spot. I'm, I'm gonna get some calls tonight about this. Uh, for me. Uh, high school, especially. You know what? I'm sorry. Dwayne Wade yep. and Derrick Rose. Okay. Derrick Rose. Antoine Walker, I, I apologize. I, I went to <laughs> went to high school because of Twan. So. Really? But Twan would be would be right there for me, too. But those guys, you know, when you think about their pro careers with D. Wade and Derrick and Isaiah and Mark, um, yeah. you know, it's great, great players. But it's a lot gotcha. of great players. Let's go back uh, to, you know, those initial conversations that you're having with Coach Shire, what's what's going through your head when you're thinking about making the move? I know it's extremely difficult for you to leave Oklahoma simply, you know, because uh, Porter's your guy. I remember when you're leaving Northwestern, yeah. you yeah. told me and my yeah. teammates that 
he almost felt like it, it was something you couldn't turn down right. because he had been such a, a prolific person in your life and you had such, you know, he was your mentor at, at Loyola Chicago. How difficult was it to leave uh, Oklahoma? I'm gonna tell you, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm a very loyal, uh, loyal person. And so um, the reason, the, a lot of the reason it came down when I left Northwestern, uh, it wasn't something necessarily that I wanted to do yep. um, at the time. But, but Coach uh, Moser had been so instrumental in my, in my career at such a young age, um, at such a young uh, uh, turn for me in the profession. And he, and he did so much for me during those times that when he was going to restart and rebuild a program at Oklahoma, um, I felt like I, I needed to be there with Coach because, you know, what he had done for me uh, during, during that time of my career. And so, again, <clears throat> loyalty is, is, is huge with me. Um, so when me and coach, and, and you know, what's interesting about me and coach Shire, um, we talk, we, we had talked so much over the years that <clears throat> it wasn't like this entire process where we were talking every day about the job. We had already talked so much over the years about different things, about basketball, about recruiting, about life, um, that when it came, when this opportunity presented itself, it wasn't like this two week long interview process where we talked all the time about it. And so, um, you know, I, when, when he had told me that, that he was interested in talking to me about the spot, uh, one, I was, I was grateful and uh, appreciative. And, and two, obviously, um, uh, my stomach had knots in it because, you know, at Oklahoma, we hadn't quite, uh, uh, got it to where we wanted to get it to when we walked in, yeah. uh, the, the program and, 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 you know, did it kind of like we wanted to do it at Loyola. We hadn't got it there yet. So that was, that was really hard for me in terms of, uh, talking to coach, knowing that we hadn't, we hadn't got to where, where he wanted to get to with the vision of the program. Uh, but at the same time, um, me and coach Shire had developed such a good relationship. I, I really, uh, got to, got to know him. I really liked him. I really respected him. And I saw his vision as well. And so I just thought this was a situation that gave me an opportunity to come here and, and really continue to help, you know, build on what's already been put in place here, uh, but do it with Coach Shire. Yeah, absolutely. You talk about having to build programs from the ground up, hopefully. I mean, that won't be an issue here <laughs> No, for you. no, not it's an not issue a, here. Yeah. Not part of uh, the process you'll have to go through. What, when you're having those conversations, what's, I don't want to call it a sales pitch, but what kind of things uh, does Coach Kyra talk to you that really excites you about coming here? What, you know, what, um, what made you make the decision? You, you, you know what, Rise? <clears throat> he didn't have to do you know, much uh, getting me excited about this opportunity. Obviously, this, this opportunity speaks for itself. Um, but again, my respect level for him over the years and getting to know him and, and getting to know him, you know, I think he's such a brilliant basketball mind. Um, and I thought, you know, I, I'm big on learning. Um, mm -hmm. No matter how old, no matter how many years uh, I, I've been in the business, I, I think you, you know, people should be everlasting learners. And so I looked at it as another situation just after talking to Coach Shire that I can come here and I can also learn. Not only can I contribute and help, but it was another situation, another step for me to continue uh, learning just about everything. And so um, the, what got me excited was the opportunity to come and, and even learn more and even grow a, as a coach here. So, yeah. And it's interesting. This is You're the second back-to-back -back hire that hasn't played here. Uh, obviously, a, somewhat of a Duke tradition to, to hire former players. Is that something you feel pressure with? Is it exciting? Have you talked to I was Jay Lucas last year? Uh, it's a little different. What what goes through your head when you're thinking about that? Again, just one gratitude and uh, just so humbled um, to to have the opportunity to do that. And obviously, it's a little bit of <laughs> nerves that come with that, but nothing. I'm you know nothing. I feel pressure or anything like that. Um, that that you know it, it really stuck out to me. I, I told us, I told my wife this when we were at McDonald's. This one I knew I was in kind of a different place. We we're at McDonald's and the CEO asked, um, you know, how many McDonald's All Americans was in the room, and like half the players raised their hand. And then I looked behind me, and like half the coaching staff raised their hand, and I was like, <laughs> crap. <laughs> so, so now you know, like yeah. it, it's it's not too many play staffs that I've been on where I've been the worst 
player on the staff. <laughs> so this is going to be a little bit new for me, which yeah. is which is hilarious. So uh, I'm sure a lot of the guys that I've worked with that's used to me talking smack probably going to re- watch this and be like, what is he talking about? Because <laughs> I talk so much smack about basketball. I've been very quiet here when it came up to basketball conversations, <laughs> to say the least. So, uh, But I'm, I'm humbled. Um, guys, again, I can't say it enough. I have so much appreciation and gratitude for Coach uh, even like you said, you know, taking a taking a chance on hiring me, uh, and and where where it's been guys that normally has played here that that had that have held these positions. Yeah, yeah, I thought it was pretty cool. I don't know if you saw right after we met with the the CEO of McDonald's, we were in their headquarters. We walked over to uh, what was I think I guess like they had just a lot of different objects and like uh, glass. Um, portraits across the wall but they had a mcdonald's all-american section and mm-hmm. there was a signed basketball from whatever year and jay lucas's signature was on it so we really? went up and took a picture of it <laughs> i didn't see that um, yeah. yeah pretty cool yeah but awesome uh, uh let's move into so now you're here looking forward at this upcoming year and your and your tenure at duke um i mentioned earlier you're known as being you know you hang your hat on being a, a fantastic mm-hmm. recruiter one of the mm-hmm. best in the country obviously like we mentioned before without having to build a program up you're recruiting will change here as well i'm sure mm-hmm. uh people talk about it but you just recruit less guys in general mm-hmm. is there any way that you see you know your strategy changing how do you think you'll recruit here versus other places uh what's you know what kind of impact do you want to have in that realm you know i i, I tell you this um right I, I i love i'm i'm honored to be known as a as a good recruiter um you know but you know i really I, I think overall, I'm, I'm aiming to be a really good, just overall coach, um, and and that, in, and that entails recruiting. We all know how how important recruiting is in that aspect, but player relationships, on court, um, skill development, player development overall, those are things that I take a lot of pride in, uh, along with the recruiting, which again is you, you don't you don't win games if you don't if you can't get really good players. So yeah. that's very important um, in terms of strategy, uh, Rye. Um, you know, recruiting is relationships, yeah. and and I, 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 so I pride myself on genuine relationships. That's helped me uh, in recruiting. Um, you know, my, my relationships across the country um, are not, you know, are not just, um, you know, what what can you do for me? You know, I have, I have long lasting, serious, deep relationships uh, with a lot of people. That's in turn been able to help me in recruiting. So my strategy with that uh, won't change. Now, obviously, who you target, you know, will yeah. uh, change being at, at, here at Duke. But it's it's a lot of the same, you know, players that I've dealt with over the course of my years in the business. Just now we're recruiting uh, different guys. And so mm-hmm. um, I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I'm excited about that. Um, you know, I'm a basketball junkie, so I, I know – Every player in the country, I keep up with it night in, night out. So I, I am very excited about it. But again, you know, recruiting is just relationships. And and if you ask, you know, kind of kind of my my reputation around the country, um, people will tell you that I just I have really really solid relationships. And so That's again, I, I hate using the word recruiter because. I'm not a salesman, right? Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not a salesman. I, I try to really get to know, you know, everybody involved, and whether they whether they have a player or not, whether it's a kid I'm recruiting or not, uh, taking genuine interest in 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 that person or that situation is something I I truly pride myself a lot on. Yeah, the, the level of talent is is different. I remember um, when I was hitting the portal last year, um, I was uh, coach. I had reached out. And I remember going back just to try and I was unsure if I thought I was going to be able to have an impact here, play serious minutes here. So I went and started watching like Derek Lively and flips and Christian's like high school Mm -hmm. Mm mixtapes. And it was, I I had like, you know, I was a senior, so I was like pretty far removed from like watching too much high school basketball. Right, right. And I remember being just like lost, like can't figure out if these kids like can play or not really because you're watching them play in like high school school. gyms against like, you know, not not the best competition. Right. Um, and I remember calling you yeah. and asking you, um, you know, I just really respected your opinion, obviously, and asking you if you thought I could play against these kids. 100%. You know, what if they were real? If they were the real deal? If if I'd come here and be able to play against them, or if I'd just be a you know an end of the bench guy a couple minutes at the end of the game? 
Uh, so I, I remember that memory very mm -hmm. distinctly. Mm -hmm. How do you see that? Obviously, you've had much more experience. How do you watch a kid from a high school gym, see them playing at that level? Is it different when you can see guys that you know are going to have an impact immediately mm -hmm. on the court? Because that's going to be, obviously, we uh, here at Duke, that's the mm -hmm. majority of guys we're recruiting. Yeah, so it's a it's a big difference, which is why the, the transfer portal at a lot of different places um, has became so prevalent uh, yeah. over high school. Mm -hmm. uh, but but here it's different because now you you can recruit the best of the best, and you know with those top ten, top fifteen uh, prospects like a Derek Lively, like a Derek Whitehead that you watch, um, they just have some things that you know are going to translate. Yeah. You know, some things that if you've been doing it long enough, you know the length, the size, the athleticism, uh, the skill level. Um, and then a lot of it, too, uh, which goes into the recruiting, is getting to know the, the intangibles and what the player is you know, made of inside. And so if they have all those translatable um, athletic and skill uh, abilities, but they also have – some some very good intangibles inside them as far as work ethic, as far as character. Those those things are usually a can't miss a lot yeah. of times. And so um, here you can you can recruit the best of the best with high character, and that's that's one thing that I'm I'm really excited about. Um, but to your to your point, um, a lot of places have chosen to go to transfer route because it's easier to evaluate older guys that's already played at the level. Yeah. Uh, but this is, this is, this, this, this is different here. Yeah. Is different. So. No, I just remember, I remember cause I was wa literally watching like YouTube videos of, of I remember Derek, talking like, to you. Yeah. I remember watching videos of Derek Lively being like, I don't like, he looks great, yeah. but hey, like he's playing against, you right, know, like six, right. two right. kids, uh, from, from Pennsylvania. So I, I remember immediately getting a greater respect for you guys job as recruiters cause right. I was lost. Um, you mentioned the transfer portal. I'm interested to get your take, especially, being at a number of different schools, but uh, at Oklahoma and now coming here, what's your thought in the past, you know, whatever, two years, uh, the the changing landscape of college basketball with the transfer portal, with NIL, with everything that comes with that? Mm -hmm. Do you think it's been hurting the college basketball game? Do you think it's good? Where do you think it keeps going from here? You know, um, I'm I'm one of those guys when it comes to everything in life. I I believe in you got to continue to evolve and you got to stay fluid. Um, you know whether you like it or not, whether you agree with NIL or not, or agree with the transfer portal or not. I, I think those conversations don't even matter. They're yeah. here. It's real. And I think if you you either adjust and evolve, or you do something different. And yep. so I haven't thought much. You you know when it when it started to happen, right? I just kind of went with it and you have to figure it out and because if you don't figure it out you're going to get left behind and so um i i love evolving i love where the game is going um you know we i, I love the the challenge of trying to figure it out um that i you know i pride myself on taking on challenges i, I know you know this again duke is a little different i've been in some different situations at you know at oklahoma you know, we had to really start from ground up in terms of NIL, in terms of a lot of things, and it was a challenge. Yeah. And so, but but you know, I don't I don't like running from challenges. It was it was it's pretty fun to me, kind of navigating and going through. Now, some of that again is the places I've been, my background, starting at Loyola from ground up, starting at Northwestern, starting all over again, trying to build it. Those are things that I love to do. I love those challenges. And so, um, it it you know, I think we're starting. To, we're going to get out the, the the COVID window here. So I think the trend, I think high school, the one thing I don't like about it is that I think a lot of high school players um, that's not those top guys yeah. are kind of falling uh, under the radar and kind of falling, you know, falling in the, in the cracks a little bit because of the transfer portal, because guys are going so old to try to because stay old. Right, right. It's, it's exactly, me. 100%. <laughs> because now you, are you going to go get a high school kid to compete against Ryan Young, or do you want a guy from the transfer portal that's been in high school, been in college three years already? So yeah. I feel bad. I talk to a lot of parents, a lot of friends of mine call me for advice what to do with their, their, their kids that play basketball and that seven, eight years ago would have been Division One players, yeah. but now have no scholarships. Yeah. And so I, I feel I feel bad. I feel uh, some empathy for those those families and those kids. And I think we'll start to transition out of that here soon over the next year or so. Yeah. This has got to be the last year because I'm the, I'm the prime case study, I think, for that because I right. redshirted and had the COVID right. year right. going on my sixth year. So right. uh, 
It's mostly it's mostly me. It's, yeah, it's, like, it's, <laughs> you, it's me. You're, um, <laughs> you you changed the landscape of college <laughs> basketball, and you've affected so many young players. <laughs> right. Um, well, let's talk about the change with um, the conference here. I was always uh, asking Coach Shire and the guys here their their take on the the Big Ten. I came in with Jacob Grandison, so mm-hmm. we had a ton of conversations about the the change from the Big Ten to ACC. Mm-hmm. What do you see will be the biggest differences between the Big 12 and uh, the ACC? And obviously, you've, you've coached in a number of different conferences, yeah. so just intrigued yeah. to get your take on uh, on shifting conferences and what you think, you know, if that'll change your your strategy at all, your philosophy, anything like that. Um, <clears throat> a little bit of a recruiting base. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I would, you know, I, I dabbled in the Southeast and recruited the Southeast before and recruited the East Coast, as you know, uh, yeah. before. But being here now, I can really zero in on those areas yeah. uh, at, at Oklahoma. Um, even though, again, with my relationships, I was able to go do it, but it, it was a little bit harder to convince a kid from this region to come all the way you know, to the Southwest pretty much in Oklahoma. So uh, strategy-wise, being in the, in the ACC and being – on the East Coast, I'll zero in a little more on some of my relationships in this area. Uh, but one thing I've learned from being in a lot of different conferences, that, like you said, I've been, a, I think, in, in four of the Power Five leagues. Um, I've learned not to have an opinion going into a league before you actually play in that league. Okay. So when I was in the Big Ten, I Big Ten is the best. But this we do this in the Big Ten, we do <laughs> that in the Big Ten. This brand of basketball, these. And I went to the Big 12, and obviously because I'm a basketball junkie, I've watched so many Big 12 games, SEC games, ACC games. But you don't know, to me, how the league is until you actually play in it. And so yeah. I, I have a great understanding of the ACC from a bird's eye view, but I'm looking forward to playing in the league. I play, Obviously, I've played a couple of different ACC teams during my times over the years. But, you know, um, obviously it's a great league. It produces a lot of pros. Uh, but I'm I'm very excited to kind of see the ins and outs and the grind of the league. I think you got to, you know, the Big 12, Big 10, I've been in the grind of those leagues. Yeah. And so I saw them night in, night out. So I'm excited about watching it in the ACC. Why do you think uh, – I'm always trying to pick people's brains on this because I don't really know the answer. Um, even playing in the league for three years in the Big 10, but you talked about everybody says it's the, it's the most physical league, it's the best league we always have. Uh, you know, the Big Ten always has the, the, the whatever, seven or eight, nine teams go to the tournament. Haven't been able to get over the hump uh, and even send a lot of teams to the Sweet 16 Elite Eight. Why do you think that is? You know, I, I think it's a, a ton of different reasons, uh, but I, I agree with you. I think that the Big Ten is so physical. Yeah. Uh, I think by the time a lot of those teams get to the NCAA tournament, uh, they're so beat up. Uh, because you just beat each other up in that league, playing those twenty game that twenty game schedule, uh, you know. Obviously, the way the game is called, uh, to me personally, in the Big Ten is a little bit different than the way the game is called in, a, in some other leagues, and so they, they allow so much physicality. And I think you end up, you know, beating each other up so much in those leagues, and you get to the to, to the NCAA tournament, and the game's a little more fast paced. It's up and down. You know, it's a lot of different athletes. They they let you play freedom of movement. I think that's I think the the way the game is called in the NCAA tournament and in the Big Ten, it's a little bit different. That's my I, I can be yeah. completely wrong about that, but you ask for my opinion. That's my personal opinion. Yeah. So no, definitely. I just because I don't know the I don't know the answer. Right, it's, right, it's, right, right. It's crazy to see, especially playing in there. You play against so many incredible teams that you're. I'm, I'm thinking they're. You know, we got to. After some of those seasons, I'm thinking we got to have two or three teams mm-hmm. in the Elite Eight, Final Four, and it it just falls apart. So um, I'm always asking that question because yeah. I don't, I have no I'm idea. I'm curious. You've played in both leagues too, so I'll be curious that at a later time to, f- to find out what you think. I mean, you've been in the trenches and been in the battles in both leagues, so yeah, I'm no, curious it's to see what you think. A lot of conversations with uh, with Jacob Grandison last year yeah. about that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but just uh, both leagues super talented. A uh, little bit more, I-, I thought, diversity in the style of play in the ACC this past uh-huh. year. You yeah. have – not that every team in the Big Ten plays a similar brand, mm-hmm. um, but there's not too much difference. No, and not. in the ACC, you have Syracuse going to the zone. Georgia Tech plays a funky zone. Right. Um, some team, you know, Virginia plays yeah, a super different. slow yeah, brand of basketball. Ten, right. And you see Miami playing as a smaller lineup. You know, obviously we play and North Carolina plays unbelievably fast. Right. So every game you have a very different yeah, that's, that's cool. recruiting plan. And the Big Ten, a lot of it's 
throw the ball into your right, seven foot right, two center right, and operate, right, right, you know, exactly. and it's very slow down the, you know, yeah. um, so that, that's one thing that stood out, but I don't, I don't know if that's it. It's, uh, yeah. it's, it's, uh, like you said, there's a million different factors. Um, all right. Well, I know this is your first few days, so you've got a million things going on. We're going to wrap this up quickly with, uh, I don't know if you know this about me. I'm a huge trivia guy. So okay. I got some, uh, some Chicago trivia. All right. Um, <clears throat> I got five questions for you uh, to, to go quickly through this. I asked this to Coach Shire. You didn't prep me for this, Ryan. <laughs> Chicago, you've been prepping for this your whole life. Uh, I asked this to Coach Shire on the way home uh, from Chicago. He didn't know it. I, I hoping you do it. You know it. Do you know why Chicago is called the Windy City? Politics. Yeah. Yep. He said he said because it's windy. So <laughs> lost a lot of lost a lot of respect for him right there. It's because of the politics know. of our city, man. Yeah. The, pol the politicians blow hot air or something like that, right? Because they're mad. It yeah, does, it goes just, back. It's a lot of different factors that, that yeah, but it does. <laughs> but it I've is politics. That. I remember right. that. All right, one for one. Uh, you mentioned this earlier. Who was the last number one selection by the Bulls before Derrick Rose? I can, Elton Brand. Yes, <clears throat> Duke guy. Uh, two for two. Here we go. What? Famous comedy club in Chicago did Key and Peel, as well as numerous other SNL alumni, get their start at? Uh, I know this one. It's uh, You've had to have been, right? It's uh, it's right there, in, like right outside of Logan Square in Lincoln Park area. Uh, yeah, it's in Old Town. G give me what it starts with. Give me the, the first one. <laughs> uh, give me the, you can take it off. S. Um, S? Yeah. It's, uh, it's in Old Town. Oh. Uh, there might be more than one location, but the fame, the old it one is, is in uh, Old Town. I can't believe I missed this, Ryan. I, I know it. Uh, Second I'm, City. Second City. Second City. Gosh. Have you been? No, I haven't been, but I know it very well. Uh, all right. What was the original name of the Chicago White Sox before they officially became the White Sox in 1904? Very similar. Black Sox? No. That's what their name is. That what their I was. I saw what, it was like a scan. I think it was a yeah. scandal that. Yeah, um, I don't know it. Chicago White Stockings. I had no clue of that. <laughs> I've never even heard of that. Are you a White Sox over a Cubs guy? I grew up a big White Sox fan because okay. I grew up on the South Side. Yeah, working on the North Side between Loyola and Coach Moser and Coach Collins for so many years, I became a huge Cubs guy. Now. Yeah. I flipped. I'm probably going to get killed, but I flipped. Everybody is. I mean, it's fair to say that yeah. Wrigley and the Cubs have an a much, like, a much more an fun vibe. Yeah, it's an experience. Yeah, it's just an experience. <laughs> I've never even been to the White Sox Stadium. <laughs> it's I mean, like it's, more kid-friendly at White Sox yeah, Stadium. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh, okay, last question here. Uh, you're two for four. You need to go three for five here to, to keep your – Where did Coach Shire go? I didn't ask him all the questions. I just asked okay. him the Windy okay. City one because right. somebody right. was mentioned – somebody said, like, something about the Windy yeah. City. And – uh I figured he was just going to know it. Right, but, right. Uh, I'm going to um, tell you this. Not too many people know. People think it's because of the wind. Most people, even in Chicago, think yeah. it's because of the winds. So. It's not even that yeah, it's not windy. Even that windy. It's not that windy. <laughs> right. The guys from the Northeast on the team, like, they're, everybody talks. Like, we're there. And like, I, I agree that Chicago summer is, like, the peak. Yeah. But everybody's always talking about, like, oh, like, the seven or eight months, like, rest of the year, it's awful. I'm yeah. like, it's, it's it, not, right. If you're from it's New York, New Jersey, right. it's, like, it's not right. that different right. from the Northeast. Right. Um all right, last question here. Name, uh, I'll let you name four. Name all five of the traditional toppings on a Chicago-style hot dog. Okay, uh, you got the sea salt, celery, yep. um, you have pickle, yep. you have tomato, Yep. you have uh, relish, Yep. and you have mustard. Yeah, I'll, I'll count that. Spicy peppers. Spicy peppers, yeah. Uh, up yep. in the air. Um, Three for five. You get to keep your five. keep your dignity, and you I get to still believe, tell people you're from Chicago. That's the second city one, man. <laughs> um, one, man. All right. Well, thanks for taking the time. I know you got no, a super you. busy schedule getting here, but again, just to help give these fans a little bit of perspective on on your past, your decision to come here, and what you're most excited about. So, hope uh, hope you have a fun time finding an apartment. You can no. you can come live at the Bullhouse <laughs> Apartments downtown. <laughs> no, it's I'm all nice right. Place. I'll take my chances in a hotel first. <laughs> Thank you, Ryan. Appreciate being here. Uh, and again, so grateful.